Hello everyone, this is Arirang News, live from Seoul, I'm Na Hyun Kyung, and these are the stories we're following at this hour. Japan's Abe administration intends to express remorse over World War II in a statement this year. Analysts say this is Tokyo's attempt at improving ties with its neighbors, China and Korea. U.S. benchmark crude dips below the symbolic $50 per barrel mark during trading on Monday, sending shockwaves to Wall Street. And fears are rising that Korea will face another foot and mouth disease crisis as the number of reported cases increases. It started with pigs, but now a cow has tested positive. In time for the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says his government will show remorse for Japan's behavior during the war. Analysts say this could help Tokyo improve ties with China and South Korea, but they will have to wait and see how much responsibility his cabinet is willing to take for Japan's past wrongdoings. For our top story, here's Arirang News, Chim Young-gil. Giving his first news conference of the year on Monday, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said he plans to express remorse in a fresh statement this year over Japan's actions during the war and its post-war history as a pacifist nation. Our cabinet will reflect on what we did wrong during the Second World War and on our progress as a peace-loving nation. We will gather our knowledge to bring about a new statement on how to contribute further to the Asia-Pacific region and the world. As Japan gears up to mark the 70th anniversary of the end of the war on August 15th, Prime Minister Abe said he had no intention of trying to reinterpret Japan's historical wrongdoings. We will continue to adopt the stance of previous cabinets with regards to the interpretation of history, including the Murayama statement. On the 50th anniversary of the war's end in August 1995, then Prime Minister Tomiichi Murayama said Japan caused tremendous damage and suffering to Asia through its colonial rule and aggression and expressed a heartfelt apology. There have been fears that Abe will come under pressure from right-wingers in Japan who would like the apology to be repealed. Korea and China will be paying close attention to whether Abe will uphold the Murayama statement. This year has been identified as a chance for Tokyo to rebuild its strained ties with Seoul and Beijing. Relations have been chilled by territorial disputes and Abe's distorted views of wartime history. Watchers say that if Abe sticks to his word and offers a sincere apology, it could present an opportunity for Korea, China and Japan to build stronger ties this year and create a more peaceful and forward-looking atmosphere in Northeast Asia. Jim young Arirang News. Following Washington's newest sanctions on North Korea, some legislators in the U.S. are urging the government to look into relisting Pyongyang as a state sponsor of terrorism. So what effect will this have on the newly found momentum on the Korean peninsula? Our reunification ministry correspondent Hwang Sung-hee talked to some experts for answers. Take a look. The latest U.S. sanctions on North Korea following its cyber attack on Sony Pictures have sparked fresh discussions among lawmakers in Washington. What happened here is that North Korea landed a virtual bomb uh, on Sony's parking lot and ultimately had real consequences to it as a company and to many individuals uh, who work there. Some are even calling on President Barack Obama to follow through on his pledge to review relisting North Korea as a state sponsor of terrorism. Representative Eliana ross Letnan said in a statement that North Korea should have never been taken off the list and added she will reintroduce legislation to redesignate the regime as a state sponsor of terrorism as a means of putting more pressure on Pyongyang. The White House is taking a cautious stance, saying such a move requires a very specific technical justification. However, the U.S. State Department said the new executive order is the first aspect of Washington's response, noting there are ongoing discussions about other options. 
Analysts say the heightened tensions between the U.S. and North Korea will not affect the new momentum between the two Koreas for now. Relations between North Korea and the United States were bad before South Korea proposed inter-Korean talks. Since both Koreas agree on the need for dialogue and the leaders have shown a willingness, I expect North Korea to make a counter-proposal for talks in the near future. But should Pyongyang launch a violent protest, analysts expect discussions on additional U.S. sanctions to expand and warn those tensions could quickly trickle through to the Korean Peninsula. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. And in line with that report, Victor Cha, the chief Korea analyst at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, also says Washington's new sanctions will not have much of an impact on the prospects for inter-Korean talks. Speaking to reporters in Washington, he said the U.S. supports inter-Korean dialogue in the sense that Pyongyang gets the chance to deliver its message to the South directly. He also warned Seoul and Washington to brace themselves for nuclear and ballistic missile tests by North Korea this year as they could demonstrate Pyongyang's crossing of a new technology threshold such as warhead miniaturization. To domestic news now, accusations in a political scandal that's been brewing for weeks, if not months, were concluded to be false by prosecutors. But the controversy remains with the opposition party calling the prosecution's mid-investigation reports customized. For the details, here's Kwon Soa. Prosecutors have indicted a former presidential secretary on charges that he had ordered a leak of confidential documents from the presidential office. They found the documents to be fake. We have conducted a broad investigation and found the documents to be false. The scandal dates back to November with a local report alleging that President Park Geun-hye's former aide Chong Yun-hye held secret meetings with presidential secretaries seeking to drive out the current presidential chief of staff. Prosecutors say the meetings never happened. The incident has stirred up the political arena in recent weeks and dragged down President Park's approval ratings as it aroused criticism from the public who want more transparency at the presidential office. And over the prosecution's preliminary announcement on Monday, Korea's rival political parties continued with their clash. The ruling party said the suspicions were absurd to begin with. This is a breach of code of conduct that involved unverified information reported in a presidential document which led to chaos. The main opposition party said no one will trust the probe's conclusion, calling for a special investigation into the case. The prosecution has come up with a conclusion customized to the presidential office. The truth hasn't been revealed. The presidential office of Tongade says it won't be making an official comment on the prosecution's findings. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Could Korea be facing another massive foot and mouth disease outbreak? Dozens of cases have been confirmed in pigs since last month, and now a cow at a farm on the outskirts of Seoul has tested positive. Park ji tells us more. It was a nightmare for livestock farmers. More than 3 million animals, mostly pigs, were culled nationwide when the worst food and mouth disease epidemic in Korea's history broke out in late 2010. Fast forward more than four years, and fears are rising again, with more than 30 confirmed cases of the disease in the space of a few weeks, since the first case was confirmed in Chungcheongbuk-do province earlier last month. And in a worrying new turn, one cow at a small cattle farm in Ansong, some 80 kilometers south of Seoul, has been confirmed to be infected with FMD. It's the first confirmed case of the disease in a cow since this outbreak began. Ansong is famous for its livestock industry, with some 400,000 cattle and pigs at more than 1,000 farms. So far, 33 cases of food and mouth disease in pigs have been confirmed, and more than 26,000 have been culled. Quarantine authorities say the spread of the disease will not be as severe as the previous outbreak due to an improved vaccination program. 
That said, there are fears FMD could spread to some farms that haven't been visited yet. Critics have accused the government of reacting slowly to the first case. While the agriculture ministry is expanding vaccinations to more livestock, it also plans to sterilize every slaughterhouse and all livestock-related vehicles from Wednesday. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. A Korean national was recently executed in China for drug-related offenses, but the controversy surrounding the case is not just that he was executed, but that Korea was notified a week after his death sentence was carried out. Son Jung-in has the story. Korea's foreign ministry said Beijing notified it on Monday that a Korean man with a family name Kim was executed for drug-related offenses. Word came six days after the death sentence was administered. Beijing said the late notice was due to year-end administrative delays. Ministry officials called the execution incomprehensible given that they had repeatedly asked China for clemency on Kim's behalf. The ministry said it regrets the execution took place despite numerous requests to Beijing to refrain from going through with the execution. It added that it plans to boost cooperation with related countries to further prevent Korean citizens from being involved in drug-related crimes. Kim's execution has called into question the effectiveness of a consul pact between Korea and China that was signed in July and awaits ratification in Korea. Under the pact, the two sides agreed to notify the other within four days when a national of that country is held into custody and immediately if it involves a death sentence. This is not the first time a Korean national has been executed for drug-related offenses in China. In August last year, two Koreans were executed for smuggling and trading drugs. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Reports are coming in that officials in Indonesia may have found the tail of the missing Air Asia flight that disappeared over the Java Sea last week. Officials are not confirming anything yet, but if it's true, they would be closer to finding out the cause of the crash. Connie Kim reports. After days of search operations, an Indonesian vessel has found what could hold the key to discovering what caused Air Asia Flight 8501 to crash into the Java Sea. At a news conference Monday, the captain of a patrol vessel said they found what is most likely the tail of the jetliner. Now the find could be crucial as the tail end of the aircraft contained the black box voice and data recorders. However, Indonesia's chief of search and rescue, Bambang Solistio, did not confirm the discovery. As for the probe on land, Indonesia has slapped sanctions on officials that allowed Flight 8501 to depart from Surabaya Airport in Indonesia on that fateful Sunday. The airliner was not permitted to fly on Sundays, but investigators say aviation officials allowed the flight to take off anyway. Air Asia has been banned from flying between Surabaya to Singapore while the investigation is underway. Search operations resumed Monday. Sonar equipment has been deployed underwater, and authorities have widened their search area off of Borneo Island with a multinational team of more than 40 vessels in the skies and in the seas. 37 bodies have been recovered from Java Sea so far, and 13 have been identified. Connie Kim, Arirang News. In the year 2012, for Korea was added to record high. All of the day's important events. Events close to home and around the world. Join Na Hyung Young, live from Seoul. Shopping market thinks the true meaning of creation shines through. Global oil prices are hitting fresh lows not seen since 2009 in the new year. America's benchmark West Texas crude dipped below the $50 per barrel mark on Monday, and this affected U.S. stock markets as well. For more, here's Kim min -ji. New Year, same situation. Global crude prices plummeted to their lowest level since the spring of 2009 on Monday as concerns of oversupplies deepen. U.S. benchmark West Texas Intermediate Oil fell 5 percent to finish at just over $50 per barrel on the New York Mercantile Exchange. It even dipped below the symbolic threshold of $50 at one point, a level unseen since April 2009. Benchmark Brent crude also shed about 6% to around $53 a barrel. 
The latest dip in oil prices also sent shockwaves to global stock markets. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell more than 330 points, or 1.9 percent, as investors broadly sold off energy stocks. The S&P 500 shed 1.8 percent. Crude prices have been on a downward spiral since June, losing more than half of their value. Investors fear that the global supply glut, coupled with weak demand, could push prices down further. OPEC countries have only shown a stronger resolve to raise production in a fight to protect their global market share against shale production in the United States. Recent data also shows that Russian oil outputs have hit post-Soviet records, while Iraqi exports are at their highest since the 1980s. Kim min Arirang News. Five nations have raised objections at the World Trade Organization about Korea's increased tariffs on imported rice. The U.S., China, Australia, Thailand and Vietnam have taken issue with the steps taken by Korea to open up its rice market in recent months. After a 20-year grace period, Korea made the shift starting this year, setting a tariff of 513 percent on rice imports that exceed the annual quota, which currently stands at just over 400,000 tons. Responding to the criticism, Korea's ambassador to the WTO, Choi seok kyung said the Korean government would negotiate with each of the five countries to keep the tariff rate where it is since it's designed to protect the domestic rice industry. Samsung Electronics has ranked second in the world in terms of R&D spending for two consecutive years. The Korea Institute of Science and Technology Evaluation and Planning, citing figures filed by the European Commission, says Samsung poured 12 billion U.S. dollars into research and development in 2013. German automaker Volkswagen topped the list at $14 billion. Microsoft and Intel came in at third and fourth, respectively. Three Korean firms ranked in the top 100. LG Electronics was 49th on the list, while Hyundai Motor scraped in at 99th. And speaking of Hyundai Motor, the company says it will invest 73 billion U.S. dollars in facilities and R&D by 2018 in a bid to enhance the performance of its automobiles and raise its brand value. Now that's equivalent to 18 billion dollars a year. To give you some context, that's a billion dollar more than the government's annual budget for national R&D investment. 85 percent of Hyundai's investments will be devoted to improving performance standards and developing hybrids and smart cars. Another 10 billion will be set aside to build the auto group's new business complex on recently acquired land in the Seoul district of Gangnam. Now, with the recent hike in cigarette prices here in the nation, some say the most affected are men serving their compulsory military duties. Their monthly paychecks hover around $100, which means if a private wants to smoke a pack a day, he wouldn't have any money left by the end of the month. Kim Hyun-bin has more. Many Korean men start smoking or increase their tobacco consumption during their two-year mandatory military service. But the recent cigarette price hike is likely to give them pause. With the average price of a pack up roughly $2 to about $4 now, it's become a much pricier habit, especially when you consider that a private's monthly paycheck comes to less than $110. That means if a private were to smoke a pack a day, he will use up all of his paycheck before the month ends. Up until 2005, the Korean military provided each serviceman with 15 packs a month free of charge. That total gradually decreased over the next four years until 2009, when the free pack policy was phased out completely. The smoking rate in the military has slowly declined over that time as well, from roughly 60 percent in 2005 to about 50 percent in 2009 and has been edging down ever since. The military hopes to see the smoking rate dip below 30 percent as a result of this month's nationwide cigarette price hike. To nudge the cadets in the right direction, the Korean military set up clinics that encourage cadets to quit smoking. 
After the price hike, several units requested that we open smoking clinics. The cadets have been very eager to take part. That eagerness has taken the form of cadets enrolling in educational classes and using nicotine patches with the pledge to quit smoking once and for all. Kim Hyun Bin, Arirang News. In a crowded urban setting, it can be hard to take time to appreciate art, but some artists believe that sometimes it's right in front of our noses. To tell us more, we are joined, of course, by our Immuni in the studio today. Good afternoon, Immuni. Good afternoon. So in the past, we have uh, before talked about the relationship between art and architecture. So today, I have another artist as well as an art movement that not only examines the link between art and architecture, but also looks at art in our everyday lives. Take a look at this next report. An urban city of the 21st century, intensely overpopulated, full of contrasting space. Architect Cho Min Seok founded the Mass Studies Project in 2003, a project that examines the relationship between architecture and art, a place where the past and future meet, a utopia versus reality. The exhibition takes a look at the past 12 years of Cho's works, in particular, architecture, an aspect of the everyday Cho believes is closely tied with art. While most focus on the before and after of construction of a building, here it's the process that shapes the building and the culture around it. There are scores of people from different backgrounds collaborating here as well. This is an exhibition that has brought together many people I respect, including photographers. The Art and Design School Bauhaus, originally located in Germany, was open for just 14 years. But it had tremendous influence over 20th century art, architecture, textile, design, and everything in between. Korea's leading modern and contemporary art powerhouse, the National Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art, has collaborated with the Bauhaus de Sao Foundation to put together an exhibition that examines humanity's response to the changes of a new era. Kandinsky, Oskar Schlemmer, Laszlo Mohoinaj. These are some of the lesser known masters in art history you can see here. This is the first full scale Bauhaus exhibition in Asia and includes the work of six Korean artists who reflect Bauhaus in the 21st century. There's actually a cafe Bauhaus in the Seoul Art Center, so that's right. an example of the Bauhaus movement, mm -hmm. I guess. Right. So the Bauhaus um, is actually it's a movement that united art and industrial design, uh, starting from the early 1900s, and it continued. It became more and more prevalent as time progressed. Uh, but the Bauhaus was actually created in response to society's fear of people be losing their individuality, especially during a time when this industrial movement was really taking hold in the world. So through embracing the fact that the world was becoming more technical technologically advanced, this Bauhaus movement was able to kind of set a foot around, you know, around the world. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to talking about the artist uh, sure. Cho Min Seok, mm -hmm. right, and with the hoop figured right. installation so, so a very piece. popular installation piece that actually has been set up around the world. Uh, you, you, some people have seen in New York, it's been set up in Milan, uh, so a very popular one of his pieces, but actually the, ga the Plateau Gallery where they're showing it right now, the exhibition, uh, the gallery is a perfect fit for this architect and his piece and this whole uh, mass studies work because the gallery itself is dedicated to contemporary art and the continuing evolution of art. And so the artists as well, they believe in the same value and so it's a very good fit, a very good gallery and a great chance to see this really uh, beautiful installation work. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Jeannie, for bringing us the story today. You're very welcome. Good afternoon, I'm Michelle Park here with the latest weather forecast. After yesterday's nationwide rain, the weather has gotten colder again with temperatures hovering around the freezing point. 
which by the way fits perfectly because today is Huan in Korea, which is supposed to be one of the coldest days of the year according to the lunar calendar. Although the skies are looking clear and sunny, we are also expecting some strong winds coming from the west of the peninsula. And due to that, the mercury is expected to inch down throughout the day and by the time when you're heading back home from work, it'll be down to negative 4 degrees, feeling more like minus 10 degrees due to the wind chills. And tomorrow morning, uh, it, will, it will be twice as cold, so make sure to layer up when commuting to work. And now to our readings for today, so it will peak up to negative 1 this afternoon, while Gwangju and Busan will reach to 5 and 10 degrees. And to other regions, Jeju Island gets up to 9, Dokdo hits 7, while Nankungang reaches uh, way below at negative 5 degrees. Well, that's all for now, Michelle Park, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And that brings us to the end of our newscast. I'm Nae Hyun Gyeong. Thanks for staying with us. More updates coming up at 4 p.m. Korea time.